This is the podfic of 36 questions, written by Hei Wan, read by Ashita, and Burning Aurora. Sirius hadn't gone home for the Christmas holiday, despite James's repeated insistence that he was more than welcome to come to India with his family. The moon fell over Christmas, and Sirius didn't want to leave Remus behind to face it. So instead, the two of them sat in their dorm, Sirius on Remus's bed and Remus smoking a cigarette out the dorm window. Sirius watched the smoke curl out of his lips and into the night air. What have you got? Remus asked, referring to the letter in Sirius's hand. Oh, it's this muggle thing that Andromeda sent me. She said I might like it. Remus stretched out his hand and Sirius gave him the note. The experimental generation of interpersonal closeness, Remus read aloud. It's questions that are supposed to make people fall in love. It's just some dumb muggle thing. Remus raised an eyebrow. Andromeda sent you this because? Sirius tried to hide his reddening cheeks. He had written to her about having a crush and asked for advice on how to make them fall in love with you. She sends me muggle things. She knows I like them. Remus nodded and started scanning through the questions. Huh, sounds fun, he said casually. Wanna do them? Sirius's stomach dropped out of his body. Right now? Sure, it'll distract me. The almost full moon shone a bright light behind him in the window. He always became antsy around this time. Yeah, okay, Sirius said. Read the first one. Given the choice of anyone in the world, who do you want as a dinner guest? Easy. Freddie Mercury. Really? Some celebrity? Out of everyone in the world? You could have picked literally anyone else. You could have picked the goddamn Minister of Magic. I've met the Minister of Magic. He's a tosser. Remus scoffed. Of course you have. And who would you choose, Mr. High and Mighty? Freddie Mercury. Remus said with a mischievous grin. Sirius threw his head back in laughter. Oh, fuck off. Okay, what's the next question? Number two. Would you like to be famous? In what way? Of course. I want to be famous. Who wouldn't? I wouldn't. Don't want the attention. Remus replied. What would you like to be famous for? Fighting against all this pure blood nonsense, Sirius said earnestly. And being a rock star, of course. Remus smiled a bit. Of course. Okay, number three. Before making a telephone call, do you ever rehearse what you're going to say? Why? Never made a telecall. Telephone call. Remus corrected. Do you rehearse what you're going to say? Sirius asked. Not really. Remus said. I don't call many people. Only my grandma and cousins and things like that. Can't rehearse much there. Number four. What would you constitute as a perfect day for you? Sirius thought for a moment about his happiest memories. Pulling pranks with the marauders, hugs from Euphemia, Remus's smiles. Summer break at the Potters, Sirius started. All the marauders are there. We run in the woods and go swimming and play pranks on each other. We go into town for lunch and see the muggle shops. And then a home-cooked Euphemia Potter meal all ending in a night of fire whiskey. Euphemia Potter is the best cook, Remus replied. I think my best day would just be a normal day at Hogwarts, studying with Lily, pranking the marauders, laughing in the common room. Only Remus Lupin's perfect day would contain studying. Not all of us had magical training drilled into our heads since age two. Some of us need to study. Whatever. Read the next question. Question five. What did you last sing to yourself? To someone else? Um, I sang goodbye to James at the train station today. Remus rolled his eyes at the memory. He had been trying to distance himself the entire time. I sang to myself yesterday in the shower. Not sure if it counts as singing to yourself if I could hear it. I last sang to myself last week in the library when I was trying to remember that song Mary made up about the magical runes assignment. I last sang to someone else. I sang to Padfoot the last moon. Sirius remembers that morning so clearly. The wolf had been crazed the night before, killing rabbits and squirrels. 
and Prongs had barely been able to coax him back into the shrieking shack. Remus came too covered in blood and so shaken at the wolf's brutality. Sirius sent the other two away and transformed into Padfoot, who Remus just held, petting soothing strokes into his coat and quietly singing a Welsh lullaby. Sirius hadn't understood a word, but didn't need to. Being there was enough. Question six, Remus said. If you were able to live to the age of 90 and retain either the mind or body of a 30-year-old for the last 60 years of your life, which would you want? Body, Sirius said without hesitation. I don't know, Remus said. I'm not sure which the wolf will take first, the skin or the sanity. Not that there are many 90-year-old werewolves around. Don't say that. You're going to outlive us all. I know it. Remus smiled but didn't look him in the eye. Question 7. Do you have a secret hunch about how you will die? Hmm. I think however I'm going to die, it's going to be an event. Like a ballroom or a battle, something unforgettable. Even in death, Sirius Black must show us up. Remus had finished his cigarette and was staring at the moon. We both know how I'll go. I'll hurt myself or hurt someone else and they'll sentence me. Bullshit, Sirius said fiercely. You've never hurt anyone before. You never will. Remus moved past it. Question 8. Name three things you and your partner appear to have in common. Easy. We're both Gryffindors. We're both marauders. We're both sexy motherfuckers. Remus laughed. Okay, we both love pranking. We both enjoy sleeping in. Remus paused and looked over at Sirius. We both want to be good. They stared at each other until Sirius was forced to look away. Question 9, Remus continued. For what in your life do you feel most grateful? The Marauders, Sirius said without hesitation. Funny, I was going to say the same thing. Question 10, oh this is a loaded one. If you could change anything about the way you were raised, what would it be? Remus looked over at Sirius. You don't have to answer that. No, no, I will, Sirius said and tried to keep the memories from rushing back. He could still pull to the surface every insulting word and cutting curse. All that pain and anxiety he tried to bury deep beneath himself every day, the ones that came up every time he saw Regulus in the hallway. I wish... I just wish I could have been raised by the Potters from the very beginning. I wish my mother would have dropped me at their doorstep the minute she realized what a disappointment I was. Remus simply nodded. There was nothing he could say. He had been there the day after Sirius ran away. He hoped to never see him like that again. I wish I hadn't been bitten, Remus said. It was the truth, but he also didn't even know what a life without the bite would even look like. Who was he without this monster inside him? What's the next question? Sirius asked quietly. Question 11. Take four minutes to tell your partner your life story in as much detail as possible. Well, that's dumb. You know everything about me already. Yeah, I think we can skip that one. Question 12. If you could wake up tomorrow having gained any one quality or ability, what would it be? I would have the ability to destroy Slytherin in every Quidditch match from here to the end of time. Remus scoffed. You're such a dumb jack. You could have any power and you choose Quidditch. Quidditch is important. It builds morale. Sirius defended himself. Remus rolled his eyes. I would be a metamorphagus. I've always thought they were cool as hell. You know my cousin Nymphadora, Andromeda's kid? She's one of them. She's already cooler than you. Sirius threw a quill at him. Joking, sensitive bastard. Question 13. If a crystal ball could tell you the truth about yourself, your life, the future, or anything else, what would you want to know? Sirius knew what he would ask. If Remus liked him back, if they were going to get together. It was a childish request, but nothing in the world seemed more important to him. But he couldn't say that aloud. So he thought of something else, anything else. Hmm. I want to know if I'll make it through this war. Are you going to fight? Remus asked. 
Sirius nodded. As soon as I'm out of Hogwarts, I'm joining whatever army Dumbledore is building. If you will, so will I, Remus said. I'd ask the crystal ball if James and Lily are ever going to get together. Sirius laughed. <laughs> You'd think after six fucking years of James pining, Lily would be sure he liked her. Remus was looking at Sirius with a strange expression on his face that Sirius couldn't quite parse. Yeah, ridiculous. Question 14. Is there something that you've dreamed of doing for a long time? Why haven't you done it? Remus was looking at Sirius, and Sirius was looking at Remus, and for a moment it all seemed so simple. He could just do it. He could walk over there and kiss Remus and say, damn the consequences. But Remus was his best friend, and he couldn't fuck that up. He needed Remus by his side to get through the coming war. If the only way that could happen was through friendship, then so be it. I had always dreamed of running away, so I guess I already did my big dream, Sirius said, feeling the half-truth on his tongue. I've always wanted to be a professor of some kind. I think I'd be good at it. You would, Mooney. You really would. Remus's face held a gentle smile. I haven't done it yet, for obvious reasons. Question 15. What is the greatest accomplishment of your life? Same answer as last time. Running away. Remus nodded. The Marauder's Map for me. We really did something there. Question 16. What do you value most in a friendship? Serious thought for a moment. Loyalty. Maybe you should have been a Hufflepuff, Remus said with a smirk. Sirius fixed him with a faux, murderous glare. Never say that to me again. I value trust the most, Remus said. Aren't those the same thing? Sirius asked. Nah, you can be loyal to someone you don't trust. You can trust someone you aren't loyal to. You live in a complicated world, Mooney. I live in the same world as you. Question 17. What is your most treasured memory? Mm. You go first. Sirius needed a moment to find something that wasn't tainted by Walburga's ever-reaching grasp on Sirius's childhood. The first moon after all you became anime guy. It was the first time I transformed without hurting myself. That was fun. Sirius smiled at the memory. I don't have a specific one. It's more of a place. This room... When all of us are laughing and joking around, it always feels like no one can ever take our joy away from us. You're right, Remus said. Question 18. What is your most terrible memory? Remus glanced over at Sirius. If you don't... No, it's fine, Sirius said. There was nothing Remus wasn't allowed to know. Probably the night I ran away... My whole family was there, yelling at me, cursing me, trying to make me get the dark mark and join their whole rotten bunch, and I just couldn't. Sirius took a deep breath, and after what felt like hours of the Cruciatus curse, the adults left the room and it was just me and Regulus. And he just shoved a bag of flu powder into my hand and said, go. I asked him to come with me, but there were voices in the hall and he just pushed me towards the fireplace and then stunned himself. And then I was at the Potters. Sirius let out a long sigh. He had said the last part all in one breath because he knew if he stopped speaking, he would never start again. Okay, now it's your turn for a sob story. Remus let out a huff of bitter laughter. When I was like ten, and I have no memory of this, I must have broken out of the basement during a full moon. I never got the whole story, but I woke up to all the furniture in the house completely destroyed. And my mother, my beautiful, kind, caring mother, looking at a ten-year-old me in abject terror. Worst I've ever felt. You've never told me that before. Sirius said quietly. It's not a story I like to tell, Remus replied. Question 19. If you knew that in one year you would die suddenly, would you change anything about the way you are now living? Why? With the increasing news from the war and all the vile shit the Slytherins pulled every day, suddenly the question didn't feel so hypothetical. 
Sirius looked at Remus and he knew his answer in a moment. I wouldn't take anything for granted. I would tell the people I love them that I love them, and I wouldn't let them forget it. I feel the same. Remus held onto his gaze for a moment and then went back to reading the questions. Number 20. What does friendship mean to you? I mean, friendship is everything, isn't it? Saria said, you can't choose much in this world, especially not your family. But you can choose your friends. You can say, I like these people, I like being around them, and they are the most important thing in my life. That's beautiful, Pads. Maybe you should be a poet. Oh, fuck off, Saria said. Friendship to me means loving people for who they are, not who you want them to be. You should be a poet, Mooney, Remus scoffed. <laughs> Your standards are far too low. As Sirius stared at Remus's face caught in the moonlight, he couldn't help but disagree. Question 21. What roles do love and affection play in your life? Sirius sighed. He had never talked to Remus much about his string of girlfriends. Besides complaints about them and Remus always telling him to break up with them if there's so much trouble. I think I constantly seek out love and affection because I never got any at home. Hence my constant seeking of girlfriends and relationships. Remus looked over at him. Who knew Sirius Black could be self-aware? Oi, I'm self-aware. You have to be when you look this good. Remus rolled his eyes. I think, like you, love and affection were really absent in my childhood. My parents tried their best, but not many kids want to be friends with the skinny boy with scars. It wasn't really until Hogwarts that that changed. I'm glad we're friends, Mooney, Saria said. Remus gave him a smile. I'm glad we're friends, too. Question 22. Alternate sharing something you consider a positive characteristic of your partner. Share a total of five items. Uh, that's more of a command than a question, Sirius pointed out. It's your list, mate, Remus replied. Okay. One, I really like your hair. I think it frames your face well. Thank you. Sirius said he was mildly obsessed with his hair. I like your sweaters. I think they really suit you. Remus looked down at the sweater he was wearing, an oversized brown one he got at a second-hand shop. I like your leather jacket, Remus said. You always call it ridiculous, Sirius challenged. Well, it is ridiculous. Doesn't mean I don't like it. Bastard, Sirius said with a smile on his face. Can it be any positive characteristic? It doesn't have to be physical? I assume so. Hmm. I like your humor. It's very witty. Remus moved from the windowsill and sat down on the bed next to Sirius. I like your eyes. When I first met you, I couldn't stop staring at them. He was staring now. I forget how many we've done, Sirius said. Remus glanced back down at the parchment. I've done three, I think, and you've done two. So five total. Isn't it five each? Sirius asked. I'm pretty sure we're making up the rules as we go. Question 23. How close and warm is your family? Do you feel your childhood was happier than most other people's? Merlin, they're really hammering home the family shit. My childhood was definitely not happier than most other people's, for obvious reasons. My family is the very opposite of warm and loving, but they are close. Walburga's need for control over everything in her life assures that. What about you? Um, I think my family was very warm and close, but I was a very unhappy child. I never had friends before Hogwarts in the moons, of course, so I wasn't exactly a poster child of happy childhoods. Remus went back to the list. How do you feel about your relationship with your mother? They are not pulling punches. Sirius laughed. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. I think Andromeda sent you these questions just so you can have your own therapy sessions. That's that muggle talk thing, right? Yeah, you talk to a professional about your problems, and they help you work through them. Sirius shook his head. It's someone's job just to listen to people? Muggles are so strange. You know, wizards think they're so much more advanced than muggles, but it's just not true. 
You guys don't have planes or TVs or even pens. Even worse is how you treat anyone who isn't a wizard. Goblins, centaurs, mermaids, all second-class citizens. Sometimes, I think magic holds us back from truly advancing. We could learn a thing or two from muggles. Careful, Mooney. You're starting to sound like a blood traitor. Sirius joked. And proud. Okay, my relationship with my mother is pretty good. She worries too much about me, and she's not perfect, but she's always tried to give me all she could. Remus was smiling slightly at the memory of his mother. Sirius knew he missed her. He had sulked the whole day when he realized he wouldn't be able to go home for the holidays. <sighs> my relationship with my mother is hellish and hopefully non-existent from here on out, Sirius said. Question 25. Make three true we statements each. For instance, we are both in this room feeling... Remus thought for a moment, looking around the room as if it could give him the answers. Okay, we are both in the room feeling a little strange that the castle is so empty. We are both missing our families, and I mean the potters for yours. Remus's eyes settled squarely on Sirius. We are both grateful for each other's friendship. There it was again, friendship. We are both in this room feeling tired, Sirius said. It's pretty late. We're both dreading and looking forward to going crazy on this moon. We are both happy we have each other. Remus smiled a bit. Question 26. Complete the sentence. I wish I had someone with whom I could share. Oh, hmm. Oh, I don't know. I share a lot with everyone already. You don't fool me, Padfoot. I know there are things even you don't talk about. Remus said. I'll go first, then. I wish I had someone with whom I could share my thoughts. The ones I don't tell you, or the ones I'm too scared to tell myself. You can share anything with me. You know that, right? Sirius lightly kicked Remus's foot, forcing his attention to him. Yeah, I know, Remus said quietly. I wish I had someone with whom I could share my worst memories. The ones not even James knows about because he just wouldn't get it. Remus nodded. Question 27. If you're going to become a close friend with your partner, please share what would be most important for him or her to know. Don't think that counts. We're already close friends. Yeah, you already know the important shit about me. Except for the most important. Question 28. Tell your partner what you like about them. Be very honest this time. Saying things you might not say to someone you've just met. Is this supposed to be for strangers? Yeah, I think so, Sirius said. Still, let's do it. I like your strength, Remus. Remus raised an eyebrow at him, and Sirius hit him. Not like that. Though that meaning was not far off either. I meant your strength of spirit or whatever. You go through hell and back every month, and you don't complain. I definitely complain, Remus cut in. Okay, you totally complain, but still, you're still here, living your life like a normal teenager despite everything. You still get your essays done on time and plan all these crazy, amazing pranks, and I really admire that about you. Thank you, Sirius. I really admire your boldness. You do whatever the fuck you want, whenever you want. You don't give a shit about the consequences. I think you've scolded me about the same thing many times. Well, yes, because you're an idiot. But I wouldn't have it any other way. They shared private smiles, the ones they only reserved for each other. Question 29. Share with your partner an embarrassing moment in your life. Oh, this will be good. You have so many to choose from. I'm going to murder you. You were there for most of them anyway. You choose. Okay, an embarrassing serious black moment. Remus thought for a moment, then a wicked smile crossed his face. Oh, I've got one. When you tried to charm McGonagall's hat, and she made you stand in front of the class, and everyone practiced hair color charms on you. Sirius roared with laughter. Oh, fuck you. It was months before my hair was normal again. Fine. An embarrassing Remus Lupin moment is when you went on three whole dates with Evans and didn't even realize it until she tried to kiss you. 
Remus buried his head in his hands. That was so bad. James was so mad. He literally would not talk to you or even say your name for weeks. He just kept calling you traitor. Remus rolled his eyes. And people call you the dramatic one. Question 30. When did you last cry in front of another person? By yourself. Last time I cried to another person was after I ran away. The last time I cried to myself was a few nights ago. Just a typical middle-of-the-night cry. Remus's expression softened. He knew that Sirius hadn't really slept well since he ran away a year ago. It was one of those things they all knew, but didn't talk about. Last time I cried to another person was after I transformed back. That was also to myself as well, I guess. Remus always cried at the transformations. The pain was just too much. Question 31. Tell your partner something that you like about them already. You know, these questions love to swing between compliments and childhood trauma. <sighs> Sirius laughed. I like your humor. You already said that. Well, it's still true. Remus shook his head. I like your honesty. Question 32. What, if anything, is too serious to be joked about? Nothing, Sirius said immediately. The whole world's a joke. Hmm. I think there are some things we shouldn't joke about. Death, the war, all that terrible shit. But it's funny when I do it, Sirius said with a smirk. You wish, Remus replied. Question 33. If you were to die this evening with no opportunity to communicate with anyone, what would you most regret not having told someone? Why haven't you told them yet? Remus's eyes were on Sirius's. Sirius knew exactly what he would regret not saying. I love you, Mooney. I want us to be more than friends. I want to take you on dates and be the reason you smile in the morning. Why hadn't he told him? Because he couldn't afford to lose him. Not now. Not in a million years. I would regret not telling Regulus that I still love him and that it's not too late for him to make the right decision. I haven't told him because, well, it's all so fucked, isn't it? Yeah, I think he knows, though. He helped you, didn't he? Sirius nodded. Your turn. Remus sighed. I would regret not punching Fenrir Greyback in the fucking jaw. I haven't yet, because it's a dumb thing to do. It was a cop-out, Sirius could tell. There was something else he wanted to say to someone. But what could he say that he couldn't tell Sirius right now? Question 34. Your house, containing everything you own, catches fire. After saving your loved ones and pets, you have time to safely make a final dash to save any one item. What would it be? Why? You know, I left a lot of things behind at Grimmauld Place, but the one thing I wish I could go back and get were those photos you took of us at the Potters in fourth year. I used to look at them all the time whenever I felt trapped in that house or felt like Hogwarts would never come. Remus stood up and went to his trunk. Sirius watched perplexed as he rummaged through his things until he, at last, pulled out a couple of photos. You mean these? He brought them back over to the bed and Sirius wanted to cry. There they were, the exact photos he was talking about. How'd you get these? Sirius asked, amazed. I charmed us duplicates here. Remus took out his wand and duplicated the photos once again. He held them out and Sirius took them like they were made of precious gold. Sirius surged forward and pulled Remus into a tight hug. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Remus laughed in his ear. It was a bright and happy sound and Sirius fell in love with him even more. Okay, okay, Sirius said and pulled away. What would you save? The Marauder's Map, definitely. I worked too hard on that for it to go up in flames. Question 35. Of all the people in your family, whose death would you find most disturbing? Why? Regulus, Sirius answered easily. He's so young and has so much potential, you know? I hope he uses it well. Remus nodded. They all saw how Regulus held himself in the halls, 
how he got top marks and only hung around the nastiest Slytherins. Sirius didn't have much hope for him, but he was still his little brother. My mom's death would be the most disturbing, I think, Remus said. I just love her so much, but she's starting to get sick a lot recently. Muggle stuff, you know? Yeah, Sirius said, even though he didn't know. He reached out and took Remus's hand in his to provide support, he told himself. It fit perfectly within his own. Okay, last question. Share a personal problem and ask your partner's advice on how he or she might handle it. Also, ask your partner to reflect back to you how you seem to be feeling about the problem you have chosen. Last question. If there was ever a time to make a move, it was here and now, with no James or Peter to interrupt them, no girls to flirt, and if it went badly, no one else here to remind them. He thought of Remus's hand in his, how Remus's thumb was tracing patterns on his palm, how private and safe tonight had felt, how Remus kept looking at him in a way Sirius can't read but can recognize. Well, there's this boy, Sirius started, not really looking at Remus, but he could feel Remus's eyes on him. Everything in the other boy had stilled. And I really, really like him. More than I've liked anyone. But he doesn't know. Because we're such good friends and I don't want to fuck that up. Because I could not live my life without him. Serious? Remus's voice reached out. Sirius gathered all the courage in his body to look at Remus and hold his gaze. It was the most scared and the most brave he had ever been. So, how, how do you think I should handle it? Remus didn't answer his question. He surged forward and pressed his lips against Sirius's. You don't know how long I've waited for you to say something like that. Sirius smiled, the biggest grin he had. You don't know how long I've waited for you to do something like that. The End Thanks for listening.